Okay, starting from this lecture, we move on to uh, the next topic, which is ordinary differential equations. So, in this lecture, we will you know, discuss the nomenclature ordinary. Why? Why is what is ordinary about ordinary differential equations? We'll also look at you know some basic classification of you know, differential equations, and then we'll set up the scene for our study of differential equations. Okay, so a differential equation, you know, contains in general many derivatives, and they're you know tied together in some you know some linear combination of these derivatives of some unknown function, and then they add up to some other function, or it can add up to zero, right? And our job is to find a function which satisfies such a you know linear combination of various derivatives and it is an ordinary differential equation if all the derivatives involved are ordinary meaning there are no partial derivatives right. So, if there is you know if functions depend on more than one variable right and you know they uh, their derivatives with respect to different independent variables are also contained in your differential equation that is the more complicated kind and that is a partial differential equation. So, you know in general in physics uh, we have lots of uh, real world phenomena which which actually give us partial differential equations and then um, it's possible right in using certain techniques for certain class of partial differential equations to be able to recast you know these partial differential equations into into ordinary differential equations or you you know uh, a smaller set of partial differential equations can be you know, recast as a larger set of ordinary differential equations. In any case, the study of ordinary differential equation and a, a solid theoretical understanding of ODEs is absolutely essential if you want to tackle the more gory problems which come up with, within the field of partial differential equations. Um, so, and the theory of ODEs is, is you know extremely well developed very beautiful theory and so our job in the next several lectures is to make a thorough study of ODEs right from the point of view of a physicist but we will also go into the theoretical details right. So, okay. So, let us start with you know classification of ODEs right. So, one immediate and very important class of ODEs that we will concern ourselves with is the class of linear ODEs right. So, linear linear ordinary differential equations are those in which the uh, the unknown function appears only in a linear fashion right. The unknown function and its derivatives all of them have to be linear such differential equations are called linear differential equations. So, let us look at a whole bunch of examples. So, I have all of these equations which are I am claiming are linear equations right. So, you have d squared y you have the second order derivative of y appears here, but it is there is no square of this quantity. So, it is linear in the second order derivative first order derivative first and the function itself all are you know linear therefore, this is a linear differential equation. Now, you can have x here you can have you know the uh, independent variable can be uh, you know very crazy nonlinear is allowed. So, you know an example of nonlinearity is here a very simple nonlinearity you have x nonlinearity in the independent variable. So, and that is allowed and that is not really. So, you would not say that this differential equation is nonlinear it is a linear differential equation right. So, you know when you are starting out this is a um, point of confusion for a lot of students is you know they confuse between the x's and y's the dependent variable and the independent variable you should look at it carefully and indeed this differential equation is also linear because although you have x squared and in fact you have much more y and something like sin of x appears it does not matter as long because y and dy by dx both of these are linear. So, likewise this also is a um, so, x squared can appear here, x can appear here, sine of x can appear here, cos x can appear here, all kinds of possibilities as long as it is only to do with x. 
So, all of these are linear differential equations. So, let us look at a few examples of nonlinear differential equations to contrast against the first set. So, now you see that if you have a sign of y, then that is trouble. So, that is a nonlinear differential equation. So, if you have y squared, that is also a problem. And dy by dx, the whole squared plus xy is equal to 1 is also a nonlinear differential equation. So, in general, nonlinear differential equations are very hard problems and you know there are very small, very special subclasses of problems only are amenable to exact solution. And even when there are solutions, there is so much complexity. So, in fact, the field of nonlinear differential equations is a whole subject by itself, right? It would be, uh, you know, there is so much uh, rich um, phenomena associated with nonlinear differential equations. That's whole topic in itself. It gives you lots of uh, exciting um, phenomena come out of this, right? So, if we do not, uh, it is not the focus here for us to go into all of those properties, but let us, our goal here will be to, you know, make a generic study of differential equations, right? So, this is one classification at this point. So, another, uh, so, okay, so linear ODEs have this very special form. You know, there is a linear operator. It acts upon, you know, the uh, function, the unknown function y of x and it it can give you some other function of x. So, that is allowed, right? So, so this operator is linear and so a key property of linear uh, uh, differential equations is, is the so called superposition principle. So, but, but okay, before we come to that, let us also quickly point out, you know, another um, I guess a definition or you know, further classification of linear ODEs is, you know, those linear ODEs in which this right hand side f of x is equal to 0, they are called homogeneous if there is no or there is no driving term, right. So, in homogeneous differential equations are, are uh, also going to be studied in our theory and often times there is a close connection between the solution of the corresponding homogeneous differential equation and the full full blown in homogeneous differential equation right so in that context it's useful to be able to first study you know the simpler problem where you put f of x to be zero and then you bring in f of x and then you work out the full more general differential equation the solution to the more general differential equation right so in general uh, an explicit form for a general linear ode right you know you can write it like this a naught y plus a1 y prime plus a2 y double prime so on all the way it can go to whatever order equal to b provided the a's and b's are either constants or functions of x alone right so that's important right you can have functions of x and that, that's not a problem it still will be called a linear differential equation so when you have a linear ode the superposition principle holds which means that if you can find you know two different solutions then in ar an arbitrary linear combination of these two solutions is also a solution of the, uh, of the ordinary differential equation, right? So, so this will break down if there is any nonlinearity in Y, right? As you can, you know, take up some simple example and check it for yourself. So the uh, thing about linear differential equations is that superpositions of solutions are also solutions, right? So it's a key aspect of linear ODEs. Now, there is another notion which we have sort of already mentioned, but let us make that explicit and that is the order of a ODE, right. So, um, sometimes, you know, particularly early on in the study of differential equations, students get confused between order and linearity or nonlinearity, right. So, let us look at a few examples. So, the order of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative of the unknown function, right. So, if we will we'll collect, you know, a bunch of examples from the examples that we have already looked at, right. So, we here we took all these examples and broke them into two bins, one of which contained linear equations and the other ones, other bin contained nonlinear differential equations. But we could have also broken this down into, you know, order 1, order 2 and so on. So, the examples of differential equations with order 1, right, from our collection of differential equations are all of these. So, if I x square dy by dx plus x squared y, equal to sin x, you know, there is no problem if you have sin of y, it is all good as long as, you know, you just look for the highest derivative, 
so as far as this classification is concerned you only look at the highest derivative and you see dy by dx the whole squared appears it's not a problem right so there's no there is no second order it's a first order differential equation it's a nonlinear differential equation but it's a first order differential equation and so likewise you have dy by dx and you have y squared right so it's a nonlinear differential equation but it's first order and order 2 right so this is order 2 and linear and this is also order 2 and linear order 2 and once again it's it's linear right so you can cook up examples where you know you can put in a sine of y or you know sine squared of y cube i don't know so uh, you can come up with all kinds of very complicated um uh terms i mean you may not be able to solve them right at, at this point it's only an exercise in classifying differential equations so you can construct you know as complicated a differential equation as you want and and uh, identify their order okay now order phi i have just you know made up one other example so i can think of something like x to the phi d to the phi y by dx to the phi plus x to the 4 and so on all the way up to y is equal to cos of x right so i could put whatever function of x on the right hand side it's still an order phi so as long as there is this d to the phi by dx phi, even if all of these other terms are absent it's still a fifth order and so in general so you can say that a linear differential equation of order n has the following general form so now i'm saying i'm putting a linear differential equation so I have a n of x d n to the y by d x n plus a n minus 1 of x d n to n minus 1 y d divided by d x to the n minus 1 so on all the way up to a naught of x y is equal to b of x. So the essential requirement for this to be order n is that a n of x should not be identically 0. If it were then it would be a differential equation of a lower order right. So a n of x is definitely not 0 right it could be a constant it could be some other non-trivial function of x doesn't matter right and all of these other coefficients are also you know you're free to choose them to be functions of x no matter how complicated no matter how non-linear in x it's not a problem but it's still this overall differential equation would be linear and it is order n if a n of x is non-zero okay so that's a, uh, a an introduction to ODEs and why we call them ODEs and some basic concepts pertaining to order and so on. So that's all for this lecture. Thank you.